My interest in the creationism versus evolution issue goes back almost 40 years. It even inspired me to get a degree in evolutionary science, as well as to become a naturalist and guide in the Galapagos Islands, and to create this YouTube channel. And one of the most persistent creationist claims I keep encountering is that there is no compelling scientific evidence for evolution, and that, in fact, the evidence better supports creationism. In a previous video, titled, Why Don't More Scientists Believe in Creationism?, I explained some of the evidence for why virtually all life and Earth scientists accept evolutionary theory and reject young Earth creationism. In this video, I will describe the most significant conflicting predictions of evolutionary theory versus young Earth creationism and compare them with the actual evidence. There's a lot to address, so this won't be a short video, but my intent is to keep it as simple, concise, and non-technical as I can so that anyone can understand the evidence. First, let me define the two basic positions. Evolutionary theory is the idea that all life on Earth evolved from a simple common ancestor that formed billions of years ago. Through natural genetic mutations and environmental pressures determining which individuals survive, that ancestor gradually diversified into all existing species. Creationism, on the other hand, claims that the God of the Bible created all species as individual, original kinds over the course of a few days some 6,000 years ago. Now, for a claim to be scientific, it doesn't have to have all the answers, but it must make some testable predictions that could potentially prove the claim false. And the first question to ask is, if this idea is true, what evidence should we expect to see? So, let's compare the predictions between evolutionary theory and creationism. First, evolutionary theory predicts that if all today's species evolved from a single original ancestor that split into different species again and again over billions of years, we should see greater similarity in physical characteristics between species that branched off relatively recently compared to those species that branched off farther back in time. But all species must be connected to all other species at some point on this evolutionary tree of life. Indeed, that is exactly what we see. All humans, for example, share with all other apes a similar skeletal and dental structure, complex brain, full-color vision, opposable thumbs, internal organ layout, lack of an external tail, diet, and range of blood types and diseases. All apes share with all other primates binocular vision, flattened faces, relatively large brains, an external penis, only two nipples on the chest, bipedal capability, collarbones, prehensile hands and feet with five fingers and five toes, fingernails and toenails, a fatal reaction to Australia's funnel web spider venom, no other animals have this vulnerability, and an inability to create their own vitamin C. All primates share with all other mammals, warm-bloodedness, body hair or fur, milk production, single lower jawbone, and a four-chambered heart. All mammals share with all other vertebrates an internal skeleton, spinal cord, central nervous system, skull, skin, paired limbs, and closed circulatory system. All vertebrates share with all other animals a digestive system, the need to consume other life in order to survive, and almost all have the ability to reproduce sexually and control their own movement. All animals share with all other eukaryotes, cells with a membrane-bound nucleus, membrane-bound organelles, and rod-shaped chromosomes. Thus, humans are apes, primates, mammals, vertebrates, animals, and eukaryotes. This interconnectedness absolutely must exist in order for evolutionary theory to be true, and so far, every species discovered fits into this taxonomic classification system. Ironically, it was a biblical creationist, Carolus Linnaeus, who developed this system when he realized that all life shows this tree-like nested hierarchy, although he couldn't explain why such a structure exists. One consequence of this tree-like structure is that species can only inherit characteristics from their ancestral line, so if the ancestor of mammals diverged from the reptile line before birds did, characteristics that evolved exclusively in birds, such as feathered wings, could not be found in mammals. Thus, it would be impossible to find such creatures as winged horses, griffins, harpies, or angels. Nor would it be possible to find unicorns, centaurs, mermaids, 
crocodux, or any other species possessing anatomical features from a different evolutionary line that diverged before those anatomical features developed. That simply cannot happen if evolution is true. And, in fact, there is no credible evidence that any of those species ever existed. So, what would creationism predict? Well, an all-powerful god would, by definition, be able to create virtually any type of species he wanted, so he would not be limited to the constraints of the evolutionary tree of life. We would thus expect to see taxonomy break down rapidly beyond the species level, rather than show that every species is interconnected to all other life via a branching tree. And there would be no reason not to see centaurs, griffins, mermaids, crocodiles, and other species that could only exist through special creation. Yet there is no evidence that any such mixed creatures have ever existed. Every single species fits into the structure of the evolutionary tree.